Hello, today I want to discuss knowing your rights and knowing um, human rights in general for adults as well as children on an international scale. So I will first go through the actual laws and then um, discuss what, what changes has happened recently in laws um, on an international scale as well as things that we need to focus on. Um, things that need our attention more as well as hopefully uh, positive stories that had a positive outcome. The United Nations Covenant on the Rights of the Child is a human rights treaty for the rights of children. Under this treaty, governments are obliged to recognize that every child has fundamental basic rights, which include life survival and development, protection from violence, abuse and maltreatment, an education that enables children to fulfill their potential, and the right to be raised by or have contact with both parents, even if they are separated, to express their opinions and to have their ideas heard, to have their privacy protected, and their lives to not be subject to excessive interference. The summary of provisions include, but are also not limited to, the best interest of the child and implementation of their rights, and the state has to respect the parent's responsibilities as well as extended family to provide guidance for the children. Children also have the right to meet with others and to join or form associations. Children have the right to protection and from interference. Children have the right to an education and it's the state's duty to ensure that primary education is free and compulsory. Every child has the right to a name and identity at birth and as far as possible to know his or her parents and to be cared for by them. Prevention of identity means that the state has an obligation to protect and if necessary re-establish basic aspects of the child's identity. Children have the right to live with his or her parents unless incompatible with the child's best interest. Children also have the right to main con maintain contact with both parents, even if they are separated or divorced. The importance of children's rights. There are many reasons for signaling out the rights of children in a separate human rights convention. Children are individuals. Children are neither the possessions of their parents or of the state. They have equal rights as members of the human race. Children start life off as being completely dependent. They are dependent on adults for their needs as well as guidance to become independent. The actions or inactions of governments deeply impact children. Practically every area of government policy, from education to social development, has effect on the rights of the children. Policies that don't take children into account have a negative impact on the future of all members of a society. Children's views should be heard and considered in political policies. Children generally do not vote or partake in political processes, but without special attention to the opinions of children as expressed at home, in school, in social situations, in local communities, and even in governments, children's views can go unheard in many issues that affect them now or will affect them in the future. Many changes in society are having a disproportionate and often negative effect on children, transformation of the family system, globalization, climate change, digitalization, and inactive social welfare structures in many countries all have strong impacts on the lives of children. The impact of these changes can practically be devastating in situations where armed conflict and other emergencies are bound. The costs to society of failing its children are huge. Social research findings 
show that children's earliest experiences significantly influence their future development. The course of their development determines their contribution to society for the rest of their lives. The healthy development of children is crucial to the future well-being of any society. Because they are still developing, children are especially vulnerable to poor living conditions, inadequate health care, water, nutrition, housing and environmental pollution. The Convention on the Rights of the Child is the most rapidly ratified convention in history. 196 countries have become state parties to the convention. By signing the convention, the United States has stated their intention to ratify, but has not yet done so. The committee urges all levels of government to use the Convention on the Rights of the Child as a guide to policy making, including having a national plan for implementing the rights and the monitoring thereof. The convention has inspired changes in all parts of the world in the 30 years since its adoption. The lives of millions of children have been improved through the realization of rights and the fulfillment of obligations. UNICEF is the United Nations organization mandated to protect the rights of every child everywhere, especially the most disadvantaged. UNICEF is guided by the Convention on the Rights of the Child and strives to establish children's rights and international standards of behaviour towards children. UNICEF is the only organisation specifically named in the Convention on the Rights of the Child as a source of expert assistance and advice. The Convention provides UNICEF with guidance as to the areas to be assessed and addressed and is a tool to measure the progress achieved in those areas. UNICEF works with volunteers through the United Nations program and I will include the link in the description. A right is a person's justified entitlement to something from someone, usually from government. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted in 1948 and it's the foundation of international human rights law. It lays down the obligations that governments are bound to, which include freedom from discrimination, right to equality between men and women, right to life, freedom from torture, freedom from slavery, right to liberty and security of person, right to be treated with humanity and detention, freedom of movement, freedom of non-citizens from arbitrary expulsion, right to a fair trial, right to recognition before the law, right to privacy, right to religion and belief, freedom of expression, right of peaceful assembly, freedom of association, right to marry and found a family, right of children to birth registration and nationality, right to participate in public affairs, right to equality before the law and minority rights. Parties to international treaties assume obligation and duty to adhere to international law. The states are therefore obligated to protect individuals as well as groups from all human rights abuses. Most states have also adopted other laws to protect human rights. Well, international treaties form the backbone of the international human rights law. Human rights require respect of the rule of law at national and international levels. When a state ratifies a treaty, it has a legal obligation to implement and recognize the rights in that treaty. But becoming a state party is only the first step. Because recognition of rights on paper does not mean that it will be enjoyed in practice. In addition to their obligation to implement provisions of the treaty, each state party is also under the obligation to submit reports to the relevant treaty body on how those rights are being implemented. In addition to state reports, the treaty bodies may receive information on a country's human rights situation from other sources, including international human rights institutions, international and national civil society organizations, 
United Nations institutions, other intergovernment institutions and organizations, professional groups and academic institutions. Eight of the committees, the CCPR, the CERD, the CAT, the CEDAW, the CRPD, the CED, the CESCR and the CRC can receive petitions from individuals provided that the state has recognized the competence of the committee to receive such complaints and that domestic remedies have been exhausted. If you would like to know more, the International Law Commission is scheduled to hold its 75th session at the United Nations Office in Geneva from the 29th of April until the 31st of May and from the 1st of July until the 2nd of August this year. Some of the topics that will be discussed is immunity of state officials from foreign criminal jurisdiction, cessation of states in respect to state responsibility, sea level rise in relation to international law, settlement of disputes to which international organizations or parties, prevention and repression of privacy and armed robbery at sea, subsidiary means for the determination of rules of international law, and non-legally binding international agreements. The London Conference on International Law will be held on the 17th to the 18th of October this year. This event is dedicated to exploring the latest developments in international law and providing participants with the highest level insight from leading experts in the field.